EA Sports will soon be losing the title of FIFA, a title that has dominated the sports gaming industry for almost 30 years, and in that period it has perhaps become the most influential game of all time, cultivating a whole generation of football fans that believe in these false football facts. Here are 7 myths that FIFA made you believe about football. The OAP Syndrome Turning 30 is never an easy thing. For many, this brings about a midlife crisis. Why God why? But what's worse than that? is that you now suck on FIFA. Look at these pace downgrades. Why even bother playing football? Just retire. Okay, in all seriousness, we've all seen it. FIFA has led many people to believe that once a player surpasses that 30 year milestone, they're finished. It's only downhill from then on. And while this may be the case for some players, there's equally as many players that defy this. But let's be honest, we've all done it once. Whether it's deep into a career mode or at the start, you're looking at your squad, perhaps trying to raise some funds for that shiny new 95 potential prospect, but to do it, you've got to offload all the OAPs. Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. And of course, being the heartless manager that you are, you kick out all the experienced players in order to bring in the new generation. Kind of like Leonardo DiCaprio and his girlfriends. Youth prospects. Now speaking of young players, they suck. Well, kind of. While FIFA often hands out high potential ratings, few players actually reach their FIFA potential. Though this isn't really FIFA's fault as obviously predicting the future is kind of hard unless you're The Simpsons. And on top of that, the game has to give these high potential ratings, lest they want their career mode to be a wasteland barren of elite players after a few seasons. Regardless, FIFA has given a lot of fans false hope with their potential rating system. Giovanni De Santos, I'm looking at you. Size matters. For once, being under six foot actually had sporting merits in the virtual football scene. In the real world, it's still tough. Stay strong, fellow short kings. In recent FIFAs, height specifically has had a lesser impact on stats, and deservedly so. But in earlier games, being tall and pacey was relatively unheard of. This was something only a select few players had the luxury of. And of these, they tended to be the absolute best players in the game. But for the most part, if a player was fast, they tended to be of the short winger variant whilst tall players often had their pace neutered. Though in reality, tall players tend to make for very good sprinters, unlike small players. But in the sport of football, sprinting is significantly less important than accelerating, in which small players excel in, no pun intended. So while it's understandable why tall players are seen as slow, it's just simply not true. And it's something EA are trying to rectify now. Swap deal transfers. I would like to propose a trade offer. I will give you Jesse Lingard and 23.4 million and in return you give me Mbappe. Yeah, yeah, that seems fair. This is one of those things that is a win-win situation for all parties involved. You not only get to offload a player you don't want, bringing up some wages in the process, but you also get a player that you do want. Unfortunately, real football doesn't work like this. Though the concept of trade offers are very interesting, high profile deals occur few and far between. Hey, here's an interesting fact for you. Did you know in early FUTs you could do trade offers? Unfortunately they were removed because people would often use these for giveaways and god forbid EA allow people to be generous but also a lot of shady deals went down there. Speaking of trades though, since I'm providing you with this video I would very much appreciate a sub in return. I'm currently working towards 300 subs and it will mean a lot. Anyways. Back to the video. The Busquets Theorem. Sergio Busquets is perhaps the most underrated player of all time, and this was merely because he was dreadful on FIFA. Boasting a pace of 40 along with mediocre stats across the board, he was the antithesis of FIFA gameplay. In a game where everyone could dribble and pass at a consistently high level, whilst also having the capability of running, there was simply no space for Busquets. And unfortunately, many players fell into that category. Great in real life, but subpar in FIFA. But this is the issue with sports games. Whilst they can measure the semi-tangibles such as pass accuracy and top sprint speed, they can't measure the intangibles like awareness and match intelligence. By the way, this also goes the other way. Plenty of players have been overrated because of how they play in FIFA. Pace. Talking about being overrated, one highly overrated attribute is pace. While pace is of course still a key part of any team, 
it's not something worth sacrificing for like it is in game. Just look at Man City, while there is a good amount of pace in the team, it's not the be all and end all. And of course pace will be more important to some teams and less important to others depending on the team's style, but it's nowhere near as essential as it is in FIFA, where teams can make or break merely based on their pace stats. Manager DMs The dream of every player is playing in the final of the top competitions, so when an opportunity arises, why not shoot your shot? Okay, obviously this is a joke, no one believes this. Having said that, I would think it's common for any and all players to ask for more game time, at least in the right situation. But for something like youth players asking to start in the Champions League final, I think that leans more so to an error on EA's part. And finally, football being easy. Difficult football actions such as delivering a cross-field pass have been trivialized by FIFA, giving an unrealistic expectation of footballers. You'll sometimes hear in discussions about tactics that a team should just play fast one-touch football, but in reality, this is something even the best teams struggle with. Whereas in FIFA, playing one-touch football is incredibly easy. You can actually somewhat see the disparity of in-game football and real football by changing from the over pitch camera settings to the pro camera setting, which while still provides an overhead view, gives a more realistic perspective of a footballer. And believe me, it's a lot more difficult playing like this. Of course though, this doesn't just stem from FIFA players, but just simply a lot of couch football watchers. So those were 7 football myths you may or may not have believed because of FIFA. Did you believe in any of them? Or do you have any other myths that I missed? Let me know in the comment section because Loki, I'm short on content so if you could just give me a few ideas. That said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Have a great day and bye bye.